Praise the Lord. I am Apostle D. M. Lake, International Overseer of the Apostolic Church of God, Seventh Day Ministries. I will endeavor to do a short study to you, with you today on the wonderful name of Jesus. But for a more detailed study on the subject, you can request my book titled, entitled, The Wonderful Name of Jesus. Bow your heads with me. I will say a very brief word of prayer before we start our studies. It's only going to be a brief study. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we just give you thanks and praise. Thank you for those who will be listening today. I pray you will minister to their spirits and to mine, that the word will go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit and minister life to the hearers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you to get yourself um, a, a little notebook or a, 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 some sort of writing pad and a pen, and I want you to take notes as we minister scriptures. I want to say to you that sometimes I won't be looking at you directly because I am using uh, notes for the scriptures. I don't know them all by heart. So I want you to know that um, the scriptures will be coming to you as I share them. Now, the name Jesus, and I want you to call the name with me again, Jesus. Call the name with me again, Jesus. When you say Jesus, you have said it all. The name Jesus is the most awesome, glorious, majestic, unique, precious, adorable, oh bless his holy name, beautiful, gracious, listen to this, wonderfully wonderful name in the entire universe. When you say Jesus, you say peace, you say comfort, you say unparalleled love, you say trustworthiness, you say faithfulness, and I could go on and on. Words really do fail me to describe what I would really like to say. This name Jesus stands incomparable supreme, unique, peerless, inimitable, unparalleled, oh praise his name, unrivaled, august, amongst the sons of men and angels. There is no name like the wonderful name of Jesus anywhere. Angels bow at the mention of this great name. Men fear. Satan and demons tremble. What a name. Praise God. When you say Jesus, you've said the Father, you've said the Son, and you've said the Holy Ghost. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And you will find that in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. When you mention the name Jesus, you are saying Jehovah Jireh, which is the great provider. Let's look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The word there is provide. God will provide. Who then is this Jesus? We will read from Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 11. Read with me. We will also look at Saint Matthew chapter 1 verses 20 to 23. Now, reading from Philippians 2, verses 6 to 11. Who, being in the form of God, 
thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Oh, bless God. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now reading Matthew 1 verses 20 uh, to 23. Verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be with child and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. So we see here that the word is telling us that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto that and that God exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, and also that at this great and powerful name every knee would bow. Angels in heaven know about it, and things in earth would bow. Men know about it, and things under the earth would bow. Demons know about this name. This makes the name of Jesus the greatest name. Now, that is from uh, Philippians 2, 6 and 11. But let us have a quick look now and see Matthew 20, Matthew chapter 1 and verses 20 to 23. The Bible tells us that Joseph thought of putting Mary away privately. Because uh, uh, Joseph, being a man of integrity, didn't want to disgrace Mary. But the Holy Ghost was wonderful to move in a very special way. And God sent an angel to visit Joseph in a dream. The Bible tells us that Mary, uh, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Ghost in the womb of Mary. So the angel told Joseph that that which was conceived in Mary was of the Holy Ghost. And that Jesus had come to save his people from their sins. So, because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Ghost, Jesus, therefore, is the Son of God. Now, let us go down to a little bit more study. How did Jesus obtain his name? We are going to just look at that and see how Jesus obtained his name. Jesus obtained his name by inheritance. We praise the Lord for that. And we're just going to have a quick look at uh, the obtaining of his name by inheritance. So if you take your Bibles with me and uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 4 and verses, Hebrews chapter 1, I beg your pardon, verses, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4. Are we going to just look at our Bibles? So if I just grab my Bible, because it's a study, praise God, and we'll just find that very quickly. Um, if you'll just be a little patient with me, because we are looking at the Scriptures ourselves. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. 
And I am going to be reading that for you. Hebrews 1 verse 4. It says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus obtained this wonderful name by inheritance. Now we also obtain the name by bestowal. And that's going to take us round to Philippians chapter 2 and verses 9 to 11. So we're going to look at that again. Praise God. We read that before, but we're going to read it again. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. We are studying, so I want you to turn your Bibles with me. I've got to look at it myself. Praise God. So you will be patient because we are sharing together. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. And I am looking at that now. Verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus obtained his name by bestowal. Now, Jesus also obtained his name by conquest. And we are going to look at Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. So we are turning our Bibles, and I want you to turn your Bible with me. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. And that says here, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So Jesus Christ obtained his name by conquest. He conquered Satan. One song rather said he conquered demons. He conquered principalities and he conquered powers. Jesus obtained his name by birth. He was born and given this name at birth. And Matthew 1.21 said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Praise God. Now, let us look at what was the purpose of the name of Jesus. The name was to be used by the church to deliver man from the kingdom of the devil. God's plan for man's deliverance was all worked out. Jesus gave the church the power of attorney to use his name. Now, what is the meaning of the word attorney? Oxford Dictionary. A person appointed to act for another in legal matters. Therefore, Jesus has given the church the authority to use his name. And this name would do just what Jesus himself would do. Isn't that wonderful? The Apostle Paul, by the power of the Holy Ghost, gave us this command. We will read from Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. What then do we do with this wonderful and powerful name? What do we do in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus? We do just about everything. If you want progress in your life and ministry, begin to do everything, all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are authorized to use this name. The devil and his demons are crippled at the sound of this powerful name. It brings sure success in every area of life. That is why Jesus died. He paid the price by his death on Calvary's cross for man's complete deliverance. Now, if you did not know, you know now. Begin to use this great name. The entire universe knows about this name. Now, listen to this. We must praise the Lord in the wonderful name of Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. 
Praise God. I am turning Hebrews 13 and verse 15. I am reading, I am looking at the Bible. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So what do we do? We praise the Lord in Jesus' name. We preach repentance and baptism in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Praise God. I am turning the Bible, I am taking to you, and I am reading from Scripture. I use Scripture as we study. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be, I am reading, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we are authorized to preach repentance and baptism in the wonderful name of Jesus. Listen to this. We destroy the witch's power in the name of Jesus. Acts 8 and verses 9 to 12. Turn your Bibles with me. I did ask you to get a Bible. Praise God. And so we go to verse 9 of Acts chapter 8. Verse 9. I am looking at eight, verse 9. Praise God. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. I am reading from the Bible. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is a great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Verse 12. We are reading 9 to 12, and this is verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. So you see, praise God, we destroy the witch's power. Simon's power was taken away from him because the people heard the word of God. They heard the wonderful name of Jesus because when Philip went down to Samaria, see Philip preached Christ unto them. And when they heard the name of Jesus Christ, Simon's power was broken because the people were released. And further on, the Bible says there was great joy in the city. You will do well to read Acts chapter 8 right the way through yourself. Now, we can see the downpouring of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost falls when we call the name of Jesus. We read from Acts chapter 10 and verses 43 and 44. Acts 10 verse 43. I am reading from the Bible. So look down in your Bibles with me. Verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness. Now Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius. And it would do you well to read through all of Acts chapter 9. To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. The Bible says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Praise God. So through his name, praise God. And when the people in Cornelius' house, that was Cornelius and his relatives and friends, as Peter ministered the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible said the Holy Ghost fell upon all those who heard and believed the word. If you are listening today and you are hearing the name of Jesus and you believe the word, the Holy Ghost will fall on you as well. Miracles, signs, and wonders will be wrought as you use the mighty name of Jesus. And we go to Acts 19, verses 11 to 15. So we turn right over to Acts 19, and we start from verse 11. I am reading from the Bible. 
and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Praise God. So we see here, but Paul we know, praise God, went out preaching Christ unto the people. And we are going to read a little bit more um, from verse 13 to 15. Then it says, Certain of the Vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were certain sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. 15. And the evil spirits answered and says, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Do you see what I mean? The evil spirits recognized the name of Jesus. But you see, these men were trying to minister in the name of Jesus. This powerful name that they were not authorized to use because the name of Jesus is given unto believers. Because the sign shall follow them in Mark 16, that believe in my name, they shall drive out demons. But we'll read that scripture for you at the end. But we go um, to see, praise God, uh, the baptism in the name of Jesus. And what do we do in the name of Jesus? Everything. We must baptize in the name of Jesus. So somebody said, praise God, we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. I want you to know, praise God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost is in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we're going to read Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Turn your Bibles with me. We are still studying. Praise God. Acts 10 and verse 38. Praise God. And this says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Praise God. And we go back. Praise God. So we see here, praise God, God anointed Jesus, praise God, to minister, uh, praise God, in Jesus' name. So Jesus had the anointing to minister. So Jesus carried this powerful anointing, gave it to the church. And in Acts chapter 2 now, verse 38, we see here where Peter picked up this anointing and began to minister baptism in the name of Jesus. Then Peter said unto them, Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized. Hear that? Every one of you, praise God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter admonished the church to get baptized in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Why? The name of Jesus, because while Jesus was on earth, the disciples were baptizing Praise God. They were doing baptism while Jesus was on earth. Praise God. And Jesus knew they were doing baptism, but he didn't stop them. Praise God. He let them continue to do the baptism because they were doing the baptism the way God wanted it to be. And after Jesus went, praise God, all the disciples continued to baptize in the name of Jesus. So we know and see here that the baptism in Jesus' name is the baptism because we are meant to do all in the name of Jesus. And a baptism is one of them. Praise God. One of the things that we do in the name of Jesus. Now we must preach in the name of Jesus. We must teach in the name of Jesus. We must pray in the name of Jesus. We must baptize the people in the name of Jesus. We must bless our meals in the name of Jesus. We must give thanks to God in the name of Jesus. In fact, the Bible says, again repeat, whatsoever we do in word or deed, we must do all in the name of Jesus. We need to start speaking holy words in the name of Jesus. Words of comfort in the name of Jesus. Every single thing that we do, we must do it in the mighty name of Jesus. And now I'm going to read you Mark 16 and verses 
15 to 20. Turn your Bibles with me to St. Mark chapter 16. Remember, we are studying. Praise God. Don't worry about me um, trying to get the, the Bible because, see, I like to teach and, and, and study from the Bible. The Bible is our um, rule of faith. Praise God. Uh, so, you know, we just got to be ourselves. So I'm going to read it to you from Mark 16, and we are going to read from verse 15. I am reading from the Bible. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, that is in the name of Jesus, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So Jesus gave us authority. The church has been given by Jesus Christ authority to use his name. I want to admonish you today, ministers, saints of God, begin to drive out demons in Jesus' name. There are multitudes of people around the world who are bound by the powers of the devil. God has given you, God has given me, God has given us the authority to uh, administer the powerful name of Jesus. Remember that on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. The price has been paid. The victory has been won. Satan's kingdom has been brought down. And the church must put all this into practice and into effect and deliver the souls of men from the kingdom of the devil. Begin to use the name of Jesus when you are backed up on every side, when you are financially depleted, when you are sick, when you are weak, when your family is in trouble. Call upon the name of Jesus because Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, read it for yourself, says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Won't you start calling upon his name today? Call the name of Jesus. Get into your Bible. Study the name of Jesus. Search the scriptures out. Time would fail me to go through all the scriptures that I could share with you at this time. But I want to admonish you, go over the scriptures we have shared with you and studied with you tonight, this evening or this afternoon, I don't know what time of the day it is, where you are, but go into the Bible, go over these scriptures and take the name Jesus, search through your Bibles and find all the information you can get on the name of Jesus. Study how he suffered, how he bled, how he died, how Pilate said, <clears throat> I find no fault in this man. Jesus was paying the price. How in Revelation chapter 5, when they were seeking to find out who would go down, who would open the seals, shall we just read a few verses there with you from Revelation chapter 5. I just read very few verses for you in closing. Bless God in verse 2 of Revelation 5. I just read a few verses for you in closing. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Nobody else could undertake this great mystery of redeeming man from the kingdom of Satan and bringing him back to the place where God uh, had ordained for him to be, restoring him to his garden of Eden without sin and Satan. He said, proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And the Bible says that no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. I am reading from the Bible. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
uh, the root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Praise God, listen to this. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, as verse 6, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven heads, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, I am reading from the Bible, the four beasts and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So listen to this, verse 9 and last. But we go down to verse 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. Beloved, it doesn't matter where you are, you have been redeemed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shed blood, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. Because of this mighty name of Jesus, you my brother, you my sister, we are rulers in this earth over sin and Satan, over the works of the devil to deliver man from the kingdom of Satan. And we shall reign on the earth. You shall reign on the earth. I shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth because we have this powerful name of Jesus. God has given us the name of Jesus. Won't you use it? I will use it. I am using it. You use it and you will see the great difference it will make in your life and how successful and blessed you will be. God bless you really richly. Uh, if you want to uh, give us some talk to us or ask any more questions on what we have been teaching you tonight, Praise God. You can email us, praise God, at Pastor Lake, P A S T O R, Lake, L A K E, at hotmail dot co dot uk. We will be too happy to share any further information that you may need or any questions that you may want to ask. I say again, you can refer to my book the wonderful name of Jesus. Request it, and God will bless you. There are 10 pounds of books and 2 pounds posted and package, UK price. You'll have to work that out in your own country and in your own language. God bless you really richly. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. And I leave it to you tonight, the wonderful name of Jesus. God bless you, in Jesus' name.